Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! Those of you who partake in our program have surely come to the realization that we, when I say we, I'm nicely referring to me, absolutely positively adore American made-for-television movies. And as you've likely also observed, most of these films are from that wonderful decade we refer to as the 70s. Maybe not so wonderful. Shush. But tonight, we shall try something a wee bit more different. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. On the leftmost portion of your inter -ossita is the dapper chap and majordomo of Polter Mansion, the incredulous Mr. Livingston. And over to this side of your screen, weighing about the same as a young female puma, and just as, if not more deadly, is the quietly quaint and quirkily quaffed quake maker, the lovely Miss Tangella. And have we a most incredibly delightful and truly fascinating program in store for you. Because tonight we'll be joined by an Oscar-winning guest to watch a film that would never even be remotely considered to receive such a prestigious award. But first, let's chat about the film. For this evening, we shall screen Daughter of Darkness from 1990, if you can believe that. Starring Anthony Perkins, Mia Sarah, and Robert Reynolds, this film revolves around a young woman attempting to ascertain the identity of her father, only to find herself drawn into a Romanian vampire underworld. It must be a low-budget film if they shot it in a former Soviet bloc state. Hmm. As a matter of fact, Tangela says that it was actually filmed in Hungary, not Romania. I often ponder if everyone in Hungary is actually hungry. Oh, put your self-righteous virtue signals out already. I merely jest. In any case, it's a lovely picture and one of Tony Perkins' last feature films, so you don't want to miss it. But the true gem of tonight's show is our wonderful guest. For sitting in the red chair tonight will be Lorne Peterson, a man who has done visual effects for almost every great movie you've ever seen. So many that it would be absolutely insane to mention them all. So here I go. Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Dragon Slayer, Poltergeist, E.T., Return of the Jedi, Batteries Not Included, Back to the Future 2, Ghost, Daylight, Men in Black, Hook, Caddyshack, Jumanji, Jurassic Park, Pirates of the Caribbean, War of the Worlds, Hulk, Drag Me to Hell. Thank you. Once I began going, I could not cease. In any case, this man has some incredible work to show and some great stories to tell. So let's suspense with a long-winded commencement, and most importantly, don't you dare go away, for it is to be another night of special effect-laden vampire frights right here on Creature Features. <laughs> Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to Creature Features. It's going to be a wonderful night. You know why? Because we've got a wonderful movie and an even more wonderful guest, Mr. Lorne Peterson. You're, you're amazing. You know, I, I read your resume, or at least a portion of it, during the introduction, and I could not get through it. Well, 
uh, done everything. When you get old, you've done a lot of things prior. You no, know, well, I'm so. old and I have not done anything <laughs> nearly as close as you. So how would you describe yourself? Special effects, of course, but yeah. is there a specialty? I, I, definitely. I, I was a model maker. I started right. out as a model maker. I right. worked in industrial design for a while. Uh, got the, you know, some guy I knew in college said, hey, we're working on this film. Do you want to help us out? I mean, and that was it. That's it. I didn't apply for, I didn't even look in the movie industry. My goodness. And um, yeah, I just you know, went from model maker to supervisor of the models to, you know, in the beginning it was like making models. And yes, we did that all the way along, but later on it's like making what we call bigotures, you know, like sets, miniature right. sets and things right. like that. Right. Environments that things happen in, right. like uh, the execution arena for. Uh, Jedi, no Sith, right? That kind of a thing, you know. No, that, was that? No, it was a, a clones. <laughs> oh my goodness! So, just some of the movies you've done yeah. is Jurassic Park, Star Wars, several Star Wars, right? Uh, all of them. All Star all, Wars. All six. Uh, Indiana Jones. All four. All four. Uh, you've done uh, Drag Me to Hell. I did. I did Hell underneath the railroad tracks. You uh, created Hell. They created Hell, and. Uh, so tonight's guest is Satan. <laughs> the, the Prince of Darkness is with us because he created hell. No, but you've created, you've done so many films. It's incredible. Pirates of the Caribbean. What did you do for that? Uh, ships. You made ships. Yeah. Like the full size. Uh, yes, we, we made uh, everything from maybe the smallest one was maybe 12 feet. And then we did some that were 30 feet. Oh, my goodness. I mean, really big. Um, right. Models. Yeah, but really big models, you know, where right. the cannons are, cannons are about that oh my long. Oh, goodness. And, um, and did these actually go in some kind of pool? Uh, yes, uh, 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 but they went on a cart underneath, in the water, you know, right. that was underneath right. so that it could be pulled along right. with the waves and everything. Right. It didn't actually right. float like a ship. No, it, it was made so it would rock, but um, there were many versions of it, uh, including one, the one that turned upside down when Johnny Depp went to the edge of the world. Right. The mast was probably about oh my that goodness. diameter. You person could stand on, right. the, on the deck, you know, it was quite large. We're going to show photos of some of this yeah. stuff. All right, so uh, this film tonight, Daughter of Darkness, have you seen it? I haven't actually seen the film, but I saw the trailer and then I saw parts of the film. I never so didn't you know what you're getting whole... into. Yeah, I do know what I'm getting right, into. Right, all right. Uh, lots of screaming. <laughs> screaming is good. Yeah. No, no, no. And you know, it's got uh, Tony Perkins. Yeah. I t right. Yes, I know Tony Perkins. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. it's wonderful. All right, let's get the film started. When we come back, we're going to talk some more about what okay. you've done. Okay. But in the meantime, let's start Daughter of Darkness, 1990. Don't go away. gathered here today to pay tribute to Hannah Thatcher, who was a kind, generous, and loving mother. All of us who were deeply touched by her goodness can testify to the pleasure and joy she brought us through her love of life. In the midst of life, we are in death. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Amen. In this hour of need, we ask the Lord's help in giving strength to her only child, her daughter Catherine.
all passengers return to their seats in preparation for landing. All seatbelts should be fastened. Please note the captain has turned on the no smoking sign. Make sure all hand luggage is securely stored under a seat or in the overhead compartment. We'll be landing in Bucharest in about 20 minutes. We must remind you that the Romanian government does not allow photographs to be taken in the airport area. Thank you. I speak American. I speak American. I don't mean me. Please, 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 please. Okay. New York? Chicago. Oh, Chicago. White Sox, Al Capone, bang, bang, bang. My kind of town. You forgot Mrs. O'Leary's cow. Max learns all about America from GIs in 1944. Americans and me, we kill many Nazis. I personally drive General Patton in victory parade. <laughs> Pull the other leg. Patton had his own driver. You call Max a liar? I saw the movie. Really? So maybe it was Sergeant McClasky from Milwaukee. <laughs> Hire me to show you the sights, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, Max. High school teachers don't make enough money to hire personal chauffeurs. If you have dollars, you are a millionaire in Romania. I give you a house here, right? plus tape, of course. <laughs> well, I appreciate the offer, but I don't think I'm going to be seeing many sights. No, why else would a young lady from Chicago want to come to Romania? Maybe to find someone. Maybe Max can help. Ah, I wish you could. He's my father. Here we are. Enjoy your stay. Thanks a lot, Max. I hope you find your father.
This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you're just joining us, we are watching Daughter of Darkness with our friend Lorne Peterson, who is, is like an amazing special effects guy. We're gonna talk about that. But first, uh, this film, she has gone to Romania. For Vlad the Impaler's old home. One would think. Yeah, one would know, think. If you want to find a vampire, where would you go? <laughs> right. Romania. <laughs> Anyways, this film was not filmed in Romania, though. We were, we were talking during the break right. that it was actually filmed in Hungary. Right. Hungary. Close places. by. Right, right. I think the food is better in Hungary <laughs> than in Romania, oh, so that's yeah. why Romania they changed Romania had a, a big uh, problem with, a really big problem with pollution. It's the only country oh. in Europe that has actually gasoline in the ground, oil oh, in the ground. Oh, goodness. Right. All right, so you've done everything, but I think one of the biggest things you've done is star wars right you were in like that was the first film that i worked on star wars first film yeah. so what did you do in the first star wars well i i was originally hired for just two weeks believe it or not and actually two months right. to work on the death star to solve a problem and i'd had an industrial design background and uh some of the guys that were working on it were also people i went to this college with right and uh 20 years 40 years later they never asked me to leave but, so you worked on the Death Star. Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, the big f f uh, plateau that he flies over, that, right. that Death Star. Right. And that was the first thing I did. And then I, they asked me to, I was really good at detailing, very, very good at like a mandala kind of thing. Right. right. And so they said, well, would you do that whole back section, top section of the Millennium Falcon, the, the four footer? So all the engine part is everything, you know. A, really? It's like a big mandala. And then I did that really well. And then they said, well, how about you do the back engine to the sand crawler? My so goodness. I did the engine to the sand crawler. And that, and that it, it became, I was uh, not tooting my own horn, but I became the, the detailer among detailers. Right now, and the detail on those models was incredible. Yeah. You, you, you did the top of the Millennium Falcon. I did. All the stuff, all the all tubes, the all the little things. Right. Yeah, and I got that whole half section and then i went on to other parts of the now imagine Falcon, this but... you you did this and now every model maker oh, who does yeah. a millennium falcon has to follow what you've done you know uh, there's a a model maker in the east coast named uh jason jason eaton and he makes incredible reproductions of all of our models right. researches every little part and i was saying uh, I, on the computer i said to him God, you're making my life flash between my very eyes, right, you know? Right. And he said, Lauren, we're just cover bands. We're just a cover band. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good analogy. Perfect analogy. All right, let's say we get back to this film. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to talk about another film you've done. Ooh, leave that as a surprise. Don't go away. It's a good episode tonight. See you soon. Name? Kathy Thatcher. Welcome to the U.S. Embassy, ma'am. Just a precaution, ma'am. Right this way. Oh! Oh! I'm sorry. Must be Miss Thatcher. You told me you were on the way up here. What'd you do? Set a record in the elevator? I'm sorry. Kind of late, isn't it? I just got in. I thought I'd take the chance. I wrote you a letter about my father. Well, we get a lot of letters. I'm trying to find him. His name is Paul Alexandri. Well? 
Maybe one of the other consulate officers is looking into it. If you want to come back tomorrow... If I could just explain... I wish I had time, Miss Thatcher, but I've got three senators from the Corn Belt waiting for me to escort them to a reception. Gotta sell those soybeans, you know? Oh, Mr. Devon, please. I've come a very long way. Your father, he said. He was Romanian. He met my mother when she was an art student here about 20 years ago. Were they married? No. My mother said he walked out on us just before I was born. 20 years. Why'd you wait so long? My mother died a few months ago. My father's the only family I have left. It's time I found out who he was. There they are together. His address is on the back. Well, that's the old core of the city. You can check that out yourself, but don't get your hopes up. Romania is a police state. Since this regime took power, over a million people have disappeared without a trace. You must be able to do something. Sure, we can make some inquiries, but you're being a little naive if you think we're going to send the 7th Cavalry out after your father. He's not an American citizen. I'm an American citizen. And somebody here has to remember my father. Where's his family, the place that he worked? Everyone here has to serve in the army, don't they? They've got to have records. And if he's dead, then there must be a coroner's okay, report. Okay, okay. Just don't expect any miracles. Does that mean you'll help? I play a little one-on-one -on -one with a guy from the Ministry of the Interior. I'll call him tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Miss Thatcher, be careful. Everybody should be very careful in a country like this. This is as bad as Chicago. Oh, Max. Max, what are you doing here? Embassy, airport, hotels. Best places to pick up rich Americans. Oh, yeah, like me, right? So where does Max drive you tonight? Back to your hotel? No. No, I want to go somewhere first. The old core. My father lived in a boarding house. Ah, uh, the city's changed. Old Bucharest is disappearing fast. But not badly. Grigore Petrescu at your service. May I be of some assistance? Well, I don't know. I'm looking for a man who lived here over 20 years ago. Ah, uh, don't worry. The, uh, the government requires us to turn off the electricity after 9 o'clock. You're kidding. Romania is a very poor and inefficient country. The whole city's shutting down. Sounds like Peoria. Hmm. Fortunately, I make a contribution to the pension plan of our police chief. There, that's better. Miss, uh... Kathy Thatcher. Would it be agreeable if I called you Catherine? <laughs> yeah, quite agreeable. May I ask who this person is? Paul Alexandri. He's my father. Your father? Oh. It would be my great pleasure to, uh, to make some inquiries for you. I'd be very grateful. 
In that case, uh, I'll ask you to have dinner with me tomorrow night. Well, why don't you call me? I'm at the Hotel Angleterre. Uh, I hope that's not a rejection. Has any woman ever rejected you? It would be an educational experience. So, call me. He worked in a glass blower shop. We'll never find it. We are beating the wall against our head. No glass works here. I'm sorry, I, I don't speak Romanian. We are closed. I'm trying to find someone who worked around here. Are the uh, police involved? No, you won't get into any trouble, I promise. This picture was taken about 20 years ago. He'd be in his 70s by now. Paul Alexandri. Alexandri. <laughs> yes, I... I remember him. He worked here when I was a young apprentice. Do you know where he is now? There was an accident. An accident? A car struck him. He was killed. Can't this wait until morning? I'm sorry. I need to talk to someone. I don't have anyone else. So, what happened? My father's dead. Oh, I'm very sorry. Thank you. Here. Thank you for seeing me. <laughs> Beat selling soybeans. If there's anything I can do for you. It's just that I've come all this way to find him. I can't believe he's dead. But you had to know there was a good chance of that. It's difficult to explain. Something weird has been happening to me. I've been having these dreams. Dreams? I've had bad dreams all my life. But lately, they've become very intense. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not following this. I know this sounds crazy. 
The place is in my dreams. They're real. They're here. There's a man in my dreams, and I know he's my father. Oh, man. It's the truth. I know these dreams are telling me something about him. Look, I'm... I'm a diplomat. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm scared. I know it's asking you to stretch your imagination, but couldn't you just try and believe me? Forgive me, Miss Thatcher, but you're not being entirely rational. Why don't you go back to something rational, like soybeans? So what are you? This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features, uh, Daughter of Darkness. This is not a bad film. It's not a bad film. What do you mean when you say that? It means it's maybe somewhat good. Uh, no? Perhaps. Anyways, we'll get back to the movie soon, and we'll have our guest, Elon Peterson, back soon. But uh, Tangela came in because she wants to do mail, right? Eh, we only do it because she wants to do it. She's the deciding factor, is she not? Perhaps. No, she's not. He's, he's the one that comes out with a paper, and I know it's time, right? Indeed. That's what you do. How about some mail, Mr. Livingston? Here's something from Freddie Havoc. Cry havoc and loose the dogs of war. Freddie Havoc? Like as in to wreak havoc? Wreck havoc. No, it's spelled differently. It All is. Right. Uh, so uh, I don't know where he's from, but he said, just want to say I love the show, and the three of you always make my days less boring. I work at a small business, an indoor flea market, and I'm a big horror fan. And then one day, a customer showed me some of your episodes on YouTube, and I fell in love with it. Happy holidays, stay warm, and safe. Freddie. Well, thank you, Freddie. And, you know, I, 
Antique stores. You know, I used to go to antique stores all the time, and then I bought one. So I don't need any more antiques anymore. In fact, when I'm, I'm ready to sell something, I'm going to call Freddie. Maybe he's close by. We don't know, right? Who knows? I don't know. Perhaps he will write us again. There you go. Matthew Matson. Matthew Matson in Northville, Michigan. I bet, you know, Northville in Michigan is colder than Southville, Michigan. Don't give me that look. You know I'm probably right. I'm not going to argue with you. All right. All right. Uh, good evening, Vincent, Mr. Livingston, and Miss Tangella. I'm enjoying the character development of the 21st century creature feature. What do you suppose he means by that? I'm not sure. Growing up in Michigan with Count Scary, your brand adds great humor and genuine likability. I have a movie request for my brother Scott. Can you show the reanimator? Okay. Uh, first thing, uh, this this whole brand. Branding, you know, I think this this man is like some type of salesman and he, he likes speaks in that language oh. You know do lunch touch base that type of thing Anyways, uh, I don't I cannot respond in that language sir, but um, on reanimator one day we'll get reanimator and we're gonna have uh, what's her name Barbara She was in the first movie Barbara. What's her name? Barbara Crampton Barbara Crampton. She's a friend of ours. We're gonna have her on when we have that film which could be never if they won't let us show the film, right? I don't know. We'll try. Tell your brother we'll try. Uh, that, thanks for writing, Matt. What's up? So the last one, Jen Vargas. Jen Vargas from Orlando, Florida, of all places. I love Orlando. You know why? No. Because Disney World is in Orlando. No, if you want to go to Disney World, you need to go to Orlando. You cannot go to Los Angeles like the little Disneyland. This is Walt Disney World. All right, uh, she goes, uh, good evening. My husband, Jay, and I live in Orlando, Florida. He's a huge fan of all of you. Well, we're a huge fan of his, so the feeling's mutual. And loves your show. He watches every week. We are watching right now, in fact. Would you guys mind to please wish him a happy birthday? It would mean the world to him. His birthday <laughs> was December 22nd. I think we're a bit late Just a on uh, now. Mm. Well, you know, we get these things, they pile up, and we sort of stream them out, and by the time we get to them, it's, it's a bit past. So, uh, happy belated birthday, Mr. J. And, uh, happy belated birthday. Happily belated. You know, you know, we need to do, like, we can't do birthdays because we can never do them on time. We need to do, like, congratulations on something previous right i'm being born or something. right no if you had like a new baby we would say oh congratulations for your baby that was born one two six seven ten months ago right i don't know anyways uh let's see she go also goes also let me ask another favor please would tangela mind to wave hi to our friend alex in tampa florida pretty please that one's for you alex well, who is this bloke, Alex? He thinks she is really cute, but he's painfully shy and would never write in himself. From a grateful wife 3,000 miles away, thank you. Have a merry and happy holidays. Keep up the great shows. Jen Vargas, Orlando, Florida. Well, thank you so much for the kind note, Jen. And uh, you know, maybe next year, if we remember Jay on December 22nd, we'll, we'll give him a special wave. But uh, we're giving him a special wave right now, so it's just as good, right? And a wave for you too, Jen. Is that it? That would be it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us email as well, send it to the address you see here. If you'd like to send a package, which we have not gotten this week. We haven't picked up the post. We, you. I. Well, she should take a motorbike down. Just give her the key and let her take a motorbike down. And she'll never come back. Yes, she will. If you'd like to send us something in the post, send it to the address you see right here. And uh, that's it, right? That's it. That's it. All right, we're going to get back to Daughter of Darkness, but when we come back, we're going to see more wonderful things from Lorne Peterson. Don't go away. the only thing of his I have. <laughs> yeah, 
used to make up stories about my father. I pretended I was the long lost daughter of a great Romanian king and uh, I dreamt he lived in a castle and rode a magnificent white horse. <laughs> you never knew him? No. He never even tried to contact me. Life tells us we all must lose our parents. But if you love them, they are not dead. Just because they are buried in the ground. Max. I lose all my family to the Nazis. But they still live with me here. It's good that you found him. I found his grave? I still haven't found him. If he was brought here after his accident, he should be in our records. Uh, it's not it's 1965, Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. My father gave it to my mother. Ah, here you are. Paul Alexandri, 1966. Pedestrian struck by car. Does it say anything about his family? Uh, no indication of family at all. Nothing on the blood test either. This file is incomplete. In fact, no evidence that the body was ever examined at all. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> There's nothing to understand. I've been complaining about this kind of thing for years. Are you saying there's some information missing? Isn't that impossible? <laughs> You're a long way from home. You'd be surprised at what's possible here. I need a class serum trace. This year, if possible. Yes, much to see you. Then come How wonderful that you come so far from America. A daughter should know her father. So you know who I am? 
I apologize for it being not entirely honest last night. One learns to be wary of strangers. And you were a friend of my father's? I have so much to ask you. I don't know where to start. Why did he disappear? I doubt that he had much choice. He barely escaped the secret police. Secret police? Paul was very active in the reform movement. They were planning to arrest him. He would certainly have been executed. That's incredible. Why didn't he tell my mother? He thought that would have placed her life and yours in very great danger. You said he was hit by a car? A few weeks after your mother returned to America. A friend said a car suddenly appeared in the Piazza, traveling at high speed. Paul was killed at once. A friend was there. I'd like to meet him. He left Bucharest many years ago. My father's family, then? He was the last. There must be someone. Permit me to express my sympathy about your mother. She was a extraordinary woman, yes? Yes, she was. I miss her very much. You never met her? No. She never married? No. My father must have been a very special man. She never found anyone to replace him. And you? There is a, an emptiness in you. You thought your father did not want you? I felt abandoned. It took a lot of therapy to come to terms with that. You have been sick? Well, I've been having some weird dreams. Oh. The gypsies believe that dreams are messages from the dead. What kind of messages? Warnings, blessings, wishes. Paul had a wish. He was sick at heart for the pain he caused your mother. He would wish me to tell you that he loved you both very much. Thank you. That was worth coming 8,000 miles to hear. <laughs> Something strange going on. First of all, the secret police were after my father. The police? C Catherine, you must be very careful. Well, somebody's gone to a lot of trouble to remove all trace of him. This photograph is all the proof I have that he ever existed. Catherine, no. Why not try to forget about this for a few hours? Relax and enjoy yourself. <laughs> You're a very beautiful woman. <laughs> Why, well, you're much too modest to mention you're a very handsome man. You see how much we have in common? <laughs> For the beautiful lady, beautiful flowers. Thank you. Bless you, my child. What is it? She doesn't know anything, Catherine. She knows my father's family. Uh, the Cyprians? <laughs> they died out in the 18th century. You know, their castle's a museum now. Dad. Oh, Dad. Oh, family? How is that possible? They became the undead. What? Vampires. <laughs> <laughs> She's serious? I'm afraid uh, vampires are very serious in Romania. I mean, superstitious fools like this one believe they still exist. Oh, Catherine, it's all nonsense. Come on, vampires. How do I get to Supreme Castle? Ah, come on, come on. 
You promised to try the forget all that. And enjoy yourself tonight. Hmm? Yes, I did. May I ask you a personal question? I was rather hoping you would. Why are you being so nice to me? A woman asks why a man is nice to her. That's very sad. You know what I think? About what? About you. I think it's been a very long time since you were with a man who truly appreciated you. It was a lovely evening. Still is. This isn't the way to the hotel. Mesa. I am with the police. The police? Why are you here? What is your real purpose? I, I don't understand any of this. Colonel, Colonel Massa. I'm sorry to ruin your party, Colonel, but my ambassador doesn't approve of you terrorizing American citizens. Please get her out of there. We have reason to believe that this woman is an enemy of the state. Oh, enough of the cheap scare tactics. She claims to be the daughter of a man who has no record in our files. My father was killed right here in Bucharest. I can prove it. I've seen his grave. It's right over there. Is it? You OK? We are about to open the coffin. Let us clear up this little matter of parenthood right now, shall we? Esquido. Father appears to have been a woman. He's alive.
Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome back to Creature Features. We're watching Daughter of Darkness with our friend Lorne Peterson, special effects ninja. But uh, real quick on this film, she goes to Romania and she's surprised to find vampires. Would you be surprised? I would not be surprised. No, All neither those stories. Would I. I mean, I've no. been to Romania and you know I did not see any vampires, but I was looking for them. Right, right. You would think she'd do well, the same thing? You might have been asleep when they were out patrolling oh, around you know i didn't think about that they do attack yeah. when you sleep so you never know and don't right. they prefer young ladies i mean to you know i've been mistaken for a young lady oh. not not recently <laughs> however i have been mistaken for a young lady because of this so yeah. anyways what in god's name is this it is actually uh one of the original pieces off of the death star this was on the death star it was on the death star this the is big... a cannon that was shooting at luke skywalker absolutely shooting at luke my goodness. And this is a, a, a miniature of a poster that was created for the very first show. This little... He, actually, even before the film came out. The was, Star Wars. Yeah. I've never seen it referred to oh, as Oh, yes, it was called the, the Star Wars. Right, it says yeah. The Star Wars. And then I've seen that art of Lucas. I, yeah. I forget the, the art of uh, Luke. I forgot yeah. who did that. But uh, So this thing, I don't know if it's coming on the camera, but the detail on this is incredible. And you did all this. Uh, even, well, the, even the yes. grooves. What's that? Even the little grooves. Uh, yes, you, you do them by uh, taking an X-Acto knife, snapping the little tip off, and scratching right. backwards. You and that's it. Yeah, you know all of the. And you did this all freehand, no? Yeah, the model makers. It's interesting. You could tell. I can tell which model maker did which part of whatever. Our styles of scribing were oh, a little bit different from one really? to another. Well, and it looks. It looks like an integrated circuit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. No, this is this is anyway, amazing. Like, a, like an artifact, you know, uh, from uh, an actual piece of the ago. Death Star is on my table. Yeah. No, this is a first. This yeah, is incredible. And of course, on the first show, uh, they weren't they weren't seen as particularly precious. They were sometimes seen as uh, stuff to be thrown in a dumpster. Right. Oh my goodness. So, a few I, of them were saved. I, I, you know, I bet there's people out there who have these. They don't even know what they have. It's like, oh, look what I found in the dumpster. Yeah. Give it to the dog. Uh, yes. Uh, right. There's a lot of those people out there that are starting to mm. really know what, because they're sold at auctions and things right. like that. Right. You know? Now, I bet on eBay, you could get 75 American dollars for this. Maybe maybe $750. I think maybe 7500 Oh, no, no. We're no, maybe no, going no I think too you could. There. Now, if you autograph the bottom, uh, maybe my, that would a couple, a couple of dollars. Would and then to. you said to... Jim from Lawn. How about for Vincent? No, that would be nice. Yeah. No. So this is absolutely incredible. What else do you have? Well, I have uh, the prototype for Darth Vader's ship, uh, Darth the Vader executor. Sh no. We, we called it just Darth Vader's ship at the time. My goodness. But this is the kind of thing that you do to show a director, uh, you know, like, it'll, how about if it looks like this? And he goes, yeah. Or, nah, you know, that kind of a thing. And you and, made that tiny model just then, to show. And then we say, well, do you, let, do we, the cameraman, do they think they need it five feet long, eight feet long? Right. And uh, we went for probably eight, nine feet long. That's incredible. Um, but, um, yeah, it was like, if you it's, might see that those are little geodesic domes, right. and they would be equivalent to the geodesic domes that are on the top of the White Star Destroyer. So a white Star Destroyer would be about that long in comparison to Darth's ship. Oh my goodness. So it'd be much bigger. And, you know, have a crew of, a uh, huge crew of people, they'd have to have a cantina, they'd have to have bathrooms, right. uh, right. know, showers, the whole, the whole gamut. A bowling alley. A bowling alley They should too. have a bowling alley for <laughs> Darth Vader, right, right? Yeah. So, so you and some designers did this or you designed uh, it yourself? Yeah, I did it. This is his design. It. This this ship would not exist 
had Lorne not decided to make this prototype and show it to yeah. an executive of some type? Well, it's it's interesting thing that you make a lot of things for the director, a little maquettes of all the creatures and things like this. Right. And he used to have, he has, then he had a stamp, a red stamp, that was called Fabuloso. So you would put out, on a table, we put out all the various things that we had proposed making, and then whether or not I was there or somebody else was there, he'd go along and on the base or near it, he'd go, Fabuloso. Oh my goodness. Fabuloso. Fabuloso. You know, one, of, one of the chambermaids here uses a product called Fabuloso to clean the, the loo. Oh, no I kidding. wonder if it's something similar. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. Oh, that's fantastic. Anyways, I'm getting the signal. We've got to get back to the film. When we come back, you have some more props to show us. So uh, don't go away because this is the most revealing evening, is it not? Hmm. At least it's, it's better than the movie. See you soon. Excuse me, please. Let's get out of here before they change their minds. Thank you. The police know where my father is. What are you, Mrs. Columbo? Don't you know when to back off? What do you know about it? You didn't just get snatched by the Klingon Empire. Hey, I didn't have to come out in the middle of the night and save your neck, you know. Well, I'm going to find out the truth. Damn it, I'm putting you on the next plane out. You can't order me around. If I tell you to get on a plane, you will get on a damn plane. <sighs> Look, maybe you're right. Every impulse in me says that I should get out, but I can't. I'm close to something. Close? Close to what? Just need a little more time. Time to do what? Someone told me that my pendant is a crest of a family called Cyprian. I have to find their castle. Welcome to Transylvania, Miss Vampire Country. Vampires again? What is it with you people? My great-great-grandpapa was a mighty vampire hunter. He destroyed many of the undead, including Dracula himself. Stick to the heart, right? Uh, Grandpapa knew. Wait until daylight, when Dracula is asleep and helpless. Then, boom! He sure wake up on the wrong side of his coffin. <laughs> For centuries, this castle flourished as a center of Transylvanian life when it was the home of the Cyprian family. It fell into disrepair after Constantine Cyprian, the last of the bloodline, died in the 18th century. Some of the local villagers, however, believe that Prince Constantine still lives, <laughs> having been turned into a vampire over 200 years ago. On your left, you can see a magnificent statue of him from that period. Now, if you follow me through the courtyard, we will view the Don't let this be happening. Let this be another dream.
I was beginning to think you weren't coming. Oh, Grigori, I need a friend. I'm going crazy with this thing. Okay, I'm here, huh? You can tell me everything. Come on. How could I have dreamed that statue? I've never been to that castle before in my life. It looked exactly like Anton. Is he descended from the Cyprians? Am I related to him? Oh, Who is come on, he? Come on. It's okay. <laughs> Cold hands. <laughs> <sighs> You're so beautiful. So perfectly beautiful. I don't want to hurt you. We are your family, Kessler. Centuries ago, we forsook the path of humanity to embrace the power of blood. You brought us out of the fence. The rebirth of our power. Hello, Vincent. This is John Griffin from Mesa, Arizona. I just wanted to say I'm enjoying your show. I'm watching The Severed Arm right now as we speak. Hey, keep up the good work and maybe play a classic Dracula or Frankenstein. Those are my favorites. Take care. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com Welcome back to Creature Features. We're watching Daughter of Darkness with Lorne Peterson, special effects guru. And, uh, you know, this film, the vampires have teeth that come out of their tongues. 
Mm. That's disgusting. Really? It yeah. is. No, it's Have absolutely. a doctor look at that. I know. I, I think they, they hired a full-time dentist for this film. <laughs> and it looks like these teeth you have here. Yes, these, these are the jaws, the teeth to the space slug. Space slug. I love space slugs. Yeah. Now, this, of course, is just a little hand puppet. but No, that's yeah. incredible. There was a big, much bigger version of it with uh, those as teeth. This size teeth. Yeah. And then there was a very big version of it with teeth that are about four or five inches tall. My we had goodness. to make a, a very big version of it also. So was there ever a size in the films that were like that? Yeah, it was never this small. So this is, this is when you made for your kids, I presume. Uh, no, I, th I was at a uh, Comic-Con or something like that and, and doing an interview with someone like this. Right. And the guy had it laying on the table. Oh, and, so it was like so a gift I, to you. Yeah, I joined it into the conversation so I could, you know, tell him about the, uh, you know, remember when I, uh, the Millennium Falcon went through the jaws and all that stuff? So I, I have a suggestion. Quit ventriloquism and stick with special effects because you're better at special <laughs> effects than, than yeah. ventriloquism. Well, Real little kids could give a hoot. Oh, They'll all right. buy it. All right. Well, that's frightening for little children, though. You would not uh, present maybe. that to a child. Yeah, An maybe. eyeless creature? My cat wasn't impressed. I'm, so the slug. So you said it's a slug. So those things on the side are the eyes. Yes. yes those are oh, the I understand little, now. I guess they you know, can move around and... Right. Much no, no, like no. a well, you, chameleon you, or something like that. You said slug. This looks like the... It looks like the chest... Burster from yeah. Alien. He really does, doesn't he? Just no, right. No, you could do that. You could the do The granddad that. version right, of it. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that was uh, one of the most frightening parts of that movie, that's for sure. Oh, no, it any was. Any movie of that no. time. Well, you know, when they filmed that f scene, they did not tell the actors I, what was going to happen. I heard that, too. I heard right. that, too. No, so wonderful. all that splattering of the right. blood and the goop and everything was like first reaction, right. you know? So, you know, actually, we had Veronica Cartwright in that chair and told us the entire story no of how that happened. No kidding. Yes, no, we love oh. her. We love her. Yeah, yeah she was the, got splashed right. by the uh, chest burster. Right in the face. Disgusting. All right, what do you say uh, we uh, get back to this film and then we'll come back. Uh, okay. We're going to talk about how you got started in all this. Ah. All right. Off we go. Back to Daughter <laughs> of Darkness, 1990. Remember, this came out before Interview with the Vampire and it's not quite as good, but it's not bad. See you soon. You know who I am. That's not possible. My blood is in you, Catherine. Tell me who you are. Constantine Cyprian, Prince of Transylvania. You're insane. He lived over 200 years ago. Believe your dreams, Catherine. They brought you here. You were dreaming of a home. No, no, no. None of this makes any sense. You people are maniacs. What are you, some kind of devil worshippers? Their blood feeds us. But don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you. Prince Constantine. No one will hurt you. I rule here, and I order you to release her immediately. This is a tribunal hearing, Prince. We decide, not you. Catherine's under my protection. You have no right to harm her. You haven't harmed her, and Grigori is right. In this tribunal, you have no more authority than the rest of us. You may proceed. Prince Constantine, this woman is your daughter, is she not? 
she is. Impossible. No vampire can have children. No. It's a miracle. Catherine is that unaccountable rarity in nature, one of a kind. With her power, there's no limit to what we can do. She has no power. She's brought us hope. Hope for our future. Oh, yeah. Listen to him. We're a dying race. Why? Because there's one advantage human beings have over us. They can walk about in daylight. <laughs> and for centuries they've hunted us while we sleep. And destroyed us. But what if we too could move about in daylight? With our power, it would be we who destroyed them. It's an insane dream. Is it? What if one of us were to have a child with Catherine? Might not that child be more than vampire, more than human, something infinitely more than either? A human immortal. Like a child. What if Catherine's children could realize the dream we have nurtured for centuries of walking in the sunlight again? In the old world, not one of you would have dared to touch her. Time you learned something about the old world, Prince. It's gone. In the old world, we lived free and took our pleasure as we desired. In the new world, we huddled together, hunted and afraid. We need the life Catherine offers us. Life full and rich. Don't you all remember what it was like to look up and to see the sun shining upon us? Don't you remember? We can't change what we are! We can change! Help me! They're holding me prisoner! That doesn't sound like much fun. You wanna? Not yet. What are you doing? Our friends need all the plasma they can get. Although they prefer it fresh. They really believe they're vampires. Still can't believe it, can you? Mm, I... This one's gone. Leave us. dreadful place to you. I'm sorry. You gave me no choice. What are you going to do to me? Offer you the world. Our children will roam the earth by night and day. You're out of your mind. It's your birthright. I prefer you to come to me willingly. You've led a lonely life, Catherine. Yes. So too have I been lonely. Until I saw your face, there was nothing in my heart to sustain my existence. No more, Catherine. There will be no more loneliness for either of us. Eternity could be wonderful with the right person to share it. Yes. Let your vampire nature begin to grow within you.
I want you to love me. You can have fine silk sheets when we make love. Or I can take you right here. You decide. But it will be tonight. Why are you so obsessed with the American woman? And you could have me. <laughs> You'd be willing to live in a world of darkness. With you. Until the end of time. Leave me. Please, Gregory, no. Quickly, we've got to get out of here before Gregory comes for you. Leave the country tonight. No, I need mean my passport at the hotel. Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. You know those are illegal in this state. I still don't understand you and my mother. How could you be with her and not... Not make her one of the undead? Mm -hmm. I almost did. My love for Hannah was always at war with my real nature. I could never be with her when the hunger was upon me. With me? Do I frighten you, Catherine? Good. Listen to your fear. If you're one of them, you kill like them? Don't judge me, Catherine. After I was attacked and made a vampire, I tried to fight the hunger for blood that grew inside me. But it was no use. I had to kill like all the others. Why go on, then? A stake through the heart seems to be the solution. Fire is better. So I work with the furnace. Each night I challenge myself to enter the flames. But as you see, I cling to my existence as tenaciously as any human being. There's something I always wish that I could tell you. I wanted to be 
a father to you. I know. I've always known, somehow. Your mother, did she ever talk about me? Kathy, where have you been? I've been calling, but nobody answered. You look like hell. Flatterer. I've, uh, been with this gentleman. He was a friend of my father's. Oh, it's, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Secret police want to talk to you, Kathy. And they're not going to be so polite this time. I want you out of Romania tonight. Consider me gone. Is everything? Okay, well, let's get moving. Come on. You're not going back to that place. They'll destroy you. Don't worry. I'm their leader, remember? Besides, I belong with them. Their world is my world. <laughs> there are so many things I wanted to say. My father is one of them. That guy, he's not old enough. Oh, vampires don't grow old. Oh, right. How did I forget that? I guess I missed the fangs, too. They don't have fangs. They have, they have like, a thing in their tongue. Oh, for Pete's sake. If your old man's a vampire, what does that make you? What is this? You shouldn't have taken her away from us, Prince. I'm sorry, Anton. You broke the law. You dare condemn me? I make the law. I command here! Not anymore, Prince. Constantine Cyprian. Stand accused of being a traitor to your own kind. You're not thinking of spreading the story around when you get back home, are you? Why do you care what I do? Well, I've still got two grades to go before making deputy consulate chief. <laughs> I can't afford to have the Twilight Zone in my record. Oh. Well, God forbid a couple of vampires come between Jack Devlin and his career. I'll tell you something about that career. Nobody handed me this job. I was born a long way downwind of Beacon Hill in the back of my old man's auto shop. And today, I repair diplomatic relations instead of transmissions. I'm proud of what I've achieved and who I am. Hey. I'm a hard-headed mick, and I don't believe in vampires any more than I believe in leprechauns. I don't need you to get me on the plane, so would you give me my damn ticket and I'll be out of your hair? I'm sorry. I'm... I'm sorry I was hard on you. Yes. No, I, I mean it. You've shown a lot of courage coming here. And I respect that. I must be dreaming again. I think you said something nice to me. <laughs> you're an original. I'll say that for you. And you're human, after all. What? Because you're a prince, you think you're strong. Because we're low-born, you think you're better than us. But we too can be strong. Destroy me. Not yet. I want Catherine to know your pain. <laughs> She's gone. Perhaps this will induce her to return. She's safe. She'll come back to save you when she feels the pain of your torture. In a few hours, you'll be burning alive. 
when the sun comes up. Hate, Anton, hate. It's so much safer than love. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Tarom Airlines, flight 407. We'll be departing in just a few minutes. May I remind you that all carry-on baggage must be stored in the overhead compartment or under your seat. Dragi călători, bine ați venit la zborul Tarom 407. Vom pleca peste câteva minute. Vrem să vă amintim bagajele de mână. Please, miss, be no, I have to get off the plane. Open this door. Well, Open the door. Off. Open the door. Open it now. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, uh, Lawn. Peterson, amazing special effects man. This film, Daughter of Darkness, Anthony Perkins speaks with a Romanian accent. I did not know what he was trying to accomplish. It's supposed to be Romanian. That's almost impossible or unbelievable, actually. It's it's almost like when Dick Van Dyke was trying to do a British accent oh. in, in, in Mary Poppins. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it can be pretty phony. But, you know, Anthony Perkins, he was psycho. I know the uh, the Bates Motel and all that kind of stuff. Right? It's no, like, he uh, was he was he was the Bates Norman Bates. Yeah. No and one would ever this? name a motel Bates Motel or no, these days. You ever know, again, I mean. or or the child Norman Bates. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Although Tangella might. Yeah. Yeah. She would name like a dog Norman Bates or something yeah. like. That. Anyways, how did you get into all this? How how did this all start with you doing special well, effects stuff? You know, I, in some ways, I, I was a good artist as a kid. You know, right. Right away, kindergarten, horses, that kind of stuff. And I think horses might have been my specialty at the time because there was a, like, third grade. Uh, I remember, you know, where they put up that board and you have your watercolors and you do the painting. Right, right. And a little girl coming and saying, I, I heard you could draw horses really well, you know, and, you know, on and on and on. Right. And I, you know, I... And then another little girl would show up and you know, the next day. And so this so. was not only the beginning of your artistry, yeah. but it was also the beginning of your your young man pursuing young women. Yeah, true, it true. It was, I, I got a lot of brownie points for that kind right, of thing. Right, right. Um, I'm not sure it advanced me any more than any other guy at the time. Right, you know, right. So. But anyway, uh, I went on and went to college, studied art, and... Uh, a little, uh, maybe a couple of years, a year or so before Star Wars. Now, you're originally Canadian, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I so, was, I'm an immigrant. You know, I, I, from what I understand, we do not consider Canadians coming to this country as immigrants. They are just like neighbors. Whereas yeah. me, I've got to go through this whole legal process. Uh, no, you can't just wander across the border. And, no. And, uh, right. well, you can for a limited period could. of time. Right. So you came from Canada. Yeah. And then what, when, what year did you come here? 
Well, I was, uh, it was about 54, something like 1954. 1954? Yeah, I was born in 44. You don't look old enough to be from 1944. Mm -hmm. I, actually, mm -hmm. I was born a little tiny, few months before Hitler committed suicide. Few months before. Good thing it was before. Yeah. Because if you believe in reincarnation and it ah. was after, who knows, right? Have you ever heard somebody had said when believing in uh, reincarnation, there weren't enough people on the world in the world back in the time of the Egyptians. That's why so many people have to be princesses, Egyptian princesses, oh. because there weren't the quantity. Right. No, if, it's if a mathematics issue. Yeah. Right. It no. just turns out mm. it's just numbers. All right, so you came here, and then all of a sudden, George Lucas said, I must have him on my show. Not quite that. I was first asked to do... The reason I was asked to do a job for two months is that the other model makers didn't like doing it, because you had to spend most of your time on your knees to do the Death Star. Oh. And it took me a little while to realize that, that right. I got the job. They wanted me because, you know... They were already doing other stuff with models right. and said, well, why don't you hire somebody else to do that? Right. It turns out I did a really good job. And, uh, uh, you know, that one thing was that well, I was hired for two months, but I came up with this one idea that super glue wasn't available except industrially. And right. I had some. Right. You couldn't buy it in the store. So I came in like a week later after I was hired and I put a pencil over the cantilever over a right. table. And I put a little drop of super glue in there, moved my hand, and it stayed. And everybody went, how did you do that? Like it was magic. And thought it was magic. So you, were, you were the magic part of industrial light and magic. Never quite light. thought of it that way. But yeah, no, that's yeah. what you were. I, I, yeah. I'm almost convinced. I, I could be wrong. Yeah. I don't know. I don't in, know. Some ways, in some ways, my job, especially later on, was providing the trick for a magician. A magician meaning the director. Right. You know, it like... Well, could you do this, or we want right. that to happen? How would right. you make that happen? You would make like the two-headed coin for yeah. the director, or or the equivalent of a two-headed coin. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. As if if he or said a, something like that. A two-headed monster, or a f many many-headed hydra monster, whatever. A hydra you know? monster, right? Now those are scary. All, All right. right. Well, what do you up. say we wrap up this film? Okay. And when we come back, we're going to find out what you're doing next. Okay. All right. Here we go. Back to the final part of. Daughter of Darkness. Hopefully it ends well. We'll find out soon. See you then. Jack Devlin. Good morning, Mr. Devlin. You're an early riser, Colonel. No, you sleep too much. While you were dreaming, our little troublemaker decided to return for more adventures. No, she's out of your reach now, Colonel. You are misinformed. She did not take the plane last night. What are you talking about? I took... Never come to me, Jory. 
came back. I knew it. She'll try to rescue him. You have to get ready for her. It's all taken care of. Let me sleep. Reward me. You know what I want. I shall die. It wouldn't be any use to me anymore. How would we get our blood from the hospital? I start a night shift tomorrow. But if I conceived your child? <laughs> Not fertile with you. Let me sleep. What the hell do you think you're doing? Oh. Why didn't you take that plane? She's burning up. I have to help you. I figured you'd head straight back. You're, don't you know the secret police are looking for you? No, they're destroying my father. Okay, okay. Easy, easy, Kathy. Take it easy. Devlin, uh, they're real. They are vampires. I know, I know, I know. I know, me. I do. I do. I have to get him out of there. Okay, I, need a, I need a vehicle. Slow I need down. a van slow down. Let me without help. windows. Let I need blankets okay. to cover him. I, I can't take him out in the sunlight. Okay, 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 it will okay, destroy okay, him. Okay, settle in. Look, I'm going to get a cup of coffee and, and we'll No, I don't up. have time. Look, I have to get him out of there before I wake through. up. Talk this calmly. Calmly. <sighs> oh, this is so terrible. Okay, I know. I know. Look, look, look. Just, just stay here. I'm going to get us some coffee and we'll figure out our next move, okay? All right? Okay, now don't worry about anything. I'm going to take care of everything. Okay. Okay. Do a special. Yeah, yeah, tell the ambassador she's right here. And look, look, the secret police are after her. We've got to get her out of the country. Yeah. Yeah, bring the limo. We'll get her right out to the airport. Good. Bye. Okay, two espresso. Coming. Damn it! Max, I need your help. They have my father down there in the cellar. The sun is burning him up. He is in agony. You're the only one who believed me. I believe you, miss. He'll die if I don't get him out of there. Now, I need a van without windows. Can you get one for me? You mean you are going down there? Are you crazy? I'm going to get him out of there or I'm going to die trying. It's as simple as that. They'll kill you. No, not if I do it right. Now, I have a few more hours till nightfall. They can't do anything to me when they're sleeping. And what are you going to do? Put a stake in each one of them? Uh, you don't have that kind of strength. No. It's impossible. Fire. I'm going to burn out the whole lousy nest of them. No, we need kerosene for that. You're one crazy woman. Alone, you have no chance. But with Max, home run touchdown for sure. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You forget something. My great great grandpapa destroyed Dracula himself. <laughs> Garrett? The butterflies in my stomach are getting butterflies. Sure you want to do this? Okay.
Are you sure you want to go first? Family honor. Grandpa probably insist. Almost sunset. Hurry. Find your father. I deal with the others before they awaken. you, miss. Oh, no, Max, not you. I'm an old man. I don't want to die. They've promised to let me live forever. So, I've been helping them for years. Please, miss, let's all just sit here quietly until it's dark and the others can join us. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today.
He's dying, miss. The sun almost finished him. And now the anger is upon him. Let us go, Max. Before they wake up. My regrets, miss. I have nothing against you. I always liked you. Please. Too late now. They'll be here soon. Yes. Not from you. It's all right. Big kiss. Hold that thought. They're waking up. Let's move it. Okay, hold on to me. Hold on very tight. You were the kind of girl who's gonna take me to all the best places. She can't get in, she's not one of them. You were saying? My strength is in you. First victim. Catherine, my blood, use it!
in my arms later how about if i collapse in your arms Goodbye, Father. I love you. He was a brave man, your father. Yes, a man. So I guess I won't be seeing you around. No. Just when you meet somebody and get to know them, they have to leave. I have a high school soccer team to coach. We're going to win this championship this year. I wish I could see it. I could send you tickets. You know, before I met you, all I cared about was being consulate chief. I can't even think about that anymore. All I care about is you.
I warn you. A foreign service officer keeps lousy hours. The work always comes first. Everybody's in line for promotion ahead of you. And the public doesn't respect you. It's just like teaching. Ah! Oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh! And that brings the coffin lid down on the top of Daughter of Darkness. And who'd imagine burning vampires? You know, yeah, they did it first because this happened in uh, in uh, the interview with the vampire, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, right? Right. <clears throat> yes. Whoop. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. So, what do you think of the film, love? No. Why? Oh, she didn't like it because it was too new. She uh, likes old films, old TV shows. Yeah, it was kind of a middle of the road. It wasn't new and it wasn't yeah. really old. It was like, right, you know. yeah, no, and it certainly was not in view with vampire. But it, yeah. you know, it was an interesting film. Anyways, yeah. you sir, what what are you up to next? What's going on in the life of well, Mr. Lorne Peterson? Well, I I retired, uh, right? You know, like ten years ago or something right. like that. So you're done. I'm done, and uh, I no longer make models, which is uh, really strange to people who make models. Like, not even for fun. Like a hobby. Uh, you know, I, I did it for like over 40 years. So I think I, you know, made every model. That's true. No. These days. You're right. Uh, I did music for fun. And then I did it for money. Yeah. And then after you do it for money for so many years, it's no longer fun, is it? Uh, well, it always was fun. But you're right. There is a difference between art not for money and art for money. Right. Yeah, there's right. a difference. Right. You know, you... Uh, because in some ways you're you're creating, you know, with the director's vision of what what they want. You right. know, you're not uh, yours. Yeah, not my, right. my not my vision. Right. And I I didn't I threw myself completely into that, but there is a difference. Oh, indeed, indeed, yeah. right, yeah. right, all right. So, uh, enjoying retirement as you should be. I I am. Well, I, you know. I, and you could. I was bound and determined to you are, uh, do that to you, enjoy retirement. You are one of the few guests that I can honestly say can rest on his laurels because you have so mm -hmm. many laurels to rest on. Yeah, yes, that's true. No, you are you are overwhelmed with laurels. It is kind of like an invisible cloud that that I walk around with. I think it's, it's more like a halo. A ha oh, halo! It's halo, a halo, halo that he yeah. walks around with. All those films. No, you're an amazing man, and yeah. we hope to have you again. Because, you know, we only covered like a small portion of your work. Uh, right? Yeah, I think yeah. I did yeah. about 50 different films. No, yeah, we're going we're gonna to have you back. We're going to talk some more. Uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for coming. Oh, we will see was, you again soon. It was a pleasure. No, the I pleasure mean, I, was entirely... I knew I was going to have fun. Pleasure was entirely ours. Fun is fun, fun, fun. Fun is what counts. It's what we serve here. And as far as you guys are concerned, thank you so much for watching our show. We know you could have been watching... Um, the bowling show, right? They could, there's a bowling yeah. show on another channel, right? You could have been watching the bowling show, but instead you yeah. watched our show and we love you for that. See you next week. We're going to have another guest, another movie. Don't know who, don't know what, but it will be fun. See you then. So, uh, Lorne, you know, with you being an early Lucasfilm person, you probably know George Lucas and, you know, he used to watch the original Creature Features. Do you think there's any chance you might be able to put in a good word and get him to come on the show? Uh, this show? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs>